I'm on three hours of sleep. It's you, Speak TV! I'm a little delirious. <laughs> This week's Super Woman of the Week is Eartha Kitt. Now, I don't know if y'all notice how on the Oscars, when they do their whole in memory of reel of all the folks that have passed away, they forgot to add Eartha Kitt, who passed away this Christmas. Eartha Kitt was an accomplished singer, performer, and actress who has been at it for what seems like forever. And my favorite role of Eartha's is, of course, Marcus. Her role as Lady Eloise in Boomerang. It's just like, damn Oscars, how many folks y'all got on your staff and you gonna forget someone who has definitely been a huge contributor as a black woman and as an artist to our craft? Hmm, that's some whack shit, but Eartha is definitely on some super shit. Cause if she ain't fly, I don't know who is. Marcus. Sometimes I like to rock bigger ups and let downs, uh-huh, and let downs, yeah, yeah. This week's Big Up goes to everybody who helped me to put together my latest free P spandex rhymes and soul, which you can get today online. <laughs> See, this is the best part of having your own show. You can shamelessly promote things that you feel like need to be shamelessly promoted. Amen! I wish I had a tambourine right now. Man, listen, when people ask me for advice in this music business, Deep, I'm getting into the music business. Can you give me some advice? You know what I tell them? Don't be an asshole. Because let me tell you something. Had I been an asshole earlier in my career, there is no way folks would look out for me the way they do now that I'm an artist. And I'm not just any artist, I'm an independent artist. Which means there ain't no money to be throwing around to folks. But when folks rock with you and they believe in you, they look out. On this project, I got to work with some dope producers. We got Green Lantern, we got Kobas, we got Chuck English from the Cool Kids, we got Juppie from the Bay. Go stupid. Go dum dum. We got my boy Johnny Polygon on there. We also got my man Slot A from Chicago. Jet Audio from right here in New York. Big up goes to all those folks because hey man, I had to go through some bullshit to make this album happen. I had to go through a whack relationship situation. I had to mix records myself. Just speaking specifically to the sisters, in this business, don't be an asshole, but also be aggressive because ain't nobody gonna get it for you but you. You got to do what you got to do. You know, someone told me they couldn't be with me because I'm aggressive, but you got to be aggressive to win in this world. If I wasn't aggressive, I wouldn't have got this shit done. I had to sit in front of Pro Tools, my eyes was like this. Spandex Rhymes and Soul gives you a little bit of Diva's aggression, a little bit of Diva's love, a little bit of Diva's heartache, and a whole lot of support from dope mofos in this business who believe that I got something to bring aside from talking a lot of shit. And here to give the letdown report, Amanda Diva. Oh God. Hello America. I'm Amanda Diva. And though I'm not Barack Obama, I'm brown just like him. This man walks in, he's got his American flag tie on, juxtaposed to the American flag. He's doing his hand movements like this, and I just feel like all that is hypnotizing. They're trying to hypnotize. Who the fuck is Bobby Jindal? He's not real. They created him. How do they find a Republican Indian man with a Southern accent? I know Slumdog won, but that doesn't mean we're so easily fooled by this foolery Republicans. I mean, I'm just saying. He's an android. He's a droid. So this week's letdown goes to Bobby Jindal, who is the Republicans, like, counter to Barack Obama. He's like the Foxy Brown to their little kin. Like the Wario to Mario. Bobby Jindal is Bizarre Obama. But we ain't fooled. Basically, his whole standpoint was, based on what happened in Louisiana with Katrina, we have seen that we need to not let the country work together to move forward with the stimulus plan, but do like they did in Louisiana, which is just have everybody figure it out themselves. Motherfucker, the only reason they did that in Louisiana was because the government didn't do what they were supposed to do in Louisiana, which is build it back up. Talking about, you know, we reinvented the school system in Louisiana. That's because y'all was teaching school in the middle of a peanut field. The bottom line is this. 
even though Barack won the presidency, it's still very clear that there are many facets at work to not let this go on for too long. So they got this Bobby Jindal guy in so that he can apparently start the bid to run for office at the end of Barack's term. I mean, come on. Just because he's brown, don't make him down. Look at Clarence Thomas. Welcome to another edition of Sad Moments in Black History. We know that February is a wrap, but goddammit, they only give us three weeks, so we figure we can go into March a little bit, right? Now, every sad moment in black history, we like to address an artisan, a musician, and a politician. And we have not addressed a politician like this yet. So this week's sad moment in black history goes to Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. Ugh. God, this man makes you throw up in my mouth. For those of y'all who don't know who Clarence Thomas is, he is the only black man who sits on the Supreme Court, but he's one of the most conservative judges on the Supreme Court. And honestly, he shouldn't even be on the Supreme Court because he barely had any experience before he was actually appointed to the position. And also, he's just a walking, hypocritical, whack dude. Bottom line that makes me call him a sad moment of black history is two things. One, the fact that this man has had the nerve to be completely opposed to affirmative action. But nigga, the only reason you got into college was because of their affirmative action program. And I'm not talking just one college. He went to the Holy Jesuit School in Massachusetts, got in when they started their African American recruitment program, then went to Yale based on an affirmative action program. So are you telling me that you are basically fessing up and saying, well, see, I wouldn't have got here if it wasn't for affirmative action, and you know I ain't qualified. And on top of that, he's like a conservative version of Ray J. You know, like a sleaze. Does anyone remember the whole situation with Anita Hill? Before Clarence Thomas was actually appointed to the Supreme Court, there was the most legendary sexual harassment case in the history of sexual harassment. When Anita Hill stepped in, who was a professor that taught with him, and said that 10 years earlier, he had completely inundated her with sexual harassment when they were working together. Saying crazy statements, touching her, even going as so far to putting hair on a can and calling it his pubic hair. Come on. Is that what we're doing now? Though I was a youngin' when Clarence Thomas and the whole Anita Hill thing was going on, it was still obvious to me that this was a shady McFady. Now, how does a woman make up that you put pubic hair on her Coke can? How you put your own pubic hair on a Coke can? Even R. Kelly would turn her frown up at that one. Pubic hair's on your can, mmm, that's nasty. We had Messy Jesse. we even had Marion Barry with the cocaine. But with someone like Clarence Thomas, they've never had necessarily like a complete scandal go down where it was proven because of course the Need a Hill thing didn't go over because they said they couldn't prove the sexual harassment. Well, guys, darn it, what does she got to do? She got to have him on tape? I mean, really. But the bottom line is that Clarence Thomas is somebody who sits in the Supreme Court and is not a representative for anything except for just being as conservative as possible no matter what. What we need a nigga like that for? That's a sad moment in black history. I can't front y'all, my body's weary, my spirit's tired, I've been taking some blows, but we still march forth through adversity. Oh hey, look at that. It is March 4th. Happy birthday to my homeboy Devon, and happy birthday to Spandex Rhymes and Soul, which is born today. Make sure you download it and share it with a friend. Also, I'll be performing with Jay Davey at Webster Hall this weekend, Saturday, March 7th. So make sure you come out and support. It's gonna be a good, 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 good time. As usual, big ups to Artec NYC for holding us down on the graphics and also for designing a dope album cover for me. Also, once again, this is 50 and all of our syndicates. Big up, boop, boop, boop. And a big up to you all. Make sure you subscribe at youtube.com, TV. We are almost to our 50th episode, oh my gosh. But you know what? While you're waiting for that, you can also check out our new show, Diva Diva Y'all, over there on KarmaLoop.com. And that's another one. We're out of here, folks. Deuces! Hello.